So I was listening to Jeremy Vine's radio show on uh, BBC Radio 2 this morning, Monday, January the 29th, and they were talking about Parkinson's disease and talking about the medications with, which treat it. And Dr. Sarah Jarvis, excellent doctor from the UK, was talking about it. And I thought, there's a couple of things that I would have added um, particularly, so that's what I'm about to do. And before anybody uh, comments that uh, this is um, copyright infringement, it comes under fair use. So... Um, yeah, sit back down. Right, let's get on with it, shall we? We, we still have a regime of drugs that will, as I understand it, hold the progress of the disease, but not forever. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So basically, what Parkinson's is about is a tiny bit of the brain called your substantia nigra, and that sends messages down nerves to help control muscles in your body, and they go back and forwards. They produce, they work on a neurotransmitter. They need a chemical which transmits the signals and this one is called dopamine in this part of the body. So what happens is that those levels of dopamine drop. The number of cells in that part of your brain become damaged, they die, and the amount of dopamine that they produce is reduced. So the first treatment is usually to replace the dopamine in your brain, but that's easier said than done. Yeah, so, so what's happened is the dopamine has been disrupted. You can't simply just inject new dopamine into the arm or something. That doesn't work. No, absolutely not. So it, you have to stop it from being broken down. That's the problem. So, for instance, you can get, if you, if you take it as a tablet, it gets into your bloodstream, and you'll usually take something called levodopa, and your body converts that levodopa into dopamine. But we don't want that to happen outside your brain. So we give another medication which allows it to get to the brain to where it's needed, and it's there that it's converted to levodopa. Okay, all brilliant information, Sarah. Perhaps remarkably, the thing that surprised me is, well, it didn't surprise me, but she didn't mention anything about MDMA, commonly known as ecstasy, MDMA, methylene dioxide, methamphetamine, you know, the um, psychoactive substance that's used for recreational purposes. But if you take this drug, this substance, when you've got Parkinson's disease, symptoms disappear, at least at first. But I can understand why she wouldn't obviously uh, mention that. I mean, she's on the radio and she's got a certain amount of time, but this drug actually works better than all of the medications that are used. She mentioned levodopa. Well, that's a precursor to dopamine. Dopamine is the substance, as she mentioned, the neurotransmitter which is deficient in somebody with Parkinson's disease. The substantia nigra, which she mentioned, the brain area, which means black substance, by the way, in Latin, um, it's where the, the receptors or the cells are for dopamine and they die off there, you see. And dopamine, obviously, as you can imagine now, has a role in um, muscle function and, uh, well, smooth muscle function and nerve impulses and things. So when you take uh, MDMA, um, levels are restored via, not restored so much as elevated, because the mechanism of um, the, uh, the brain has to recycle dopamine, get rid of it, it's called uh, reuptake. Well, you block that reuptake mechanism. And uh, also, it, it may, may also stimulate the release of dopamine from storage vesicles. So you've got two mechanisms there. Whereas levodopa is just a precursor, like I said, to dopamine. And dopamine, obviously, great. If you can get dopamine, get dopamine. But you're never going to increase levels as much as taking something like MDMA. But it is a neurotoxic drug, uh, um, at least at some stage, and uh, there are drawbacks with it. So uh, for obvious reasons, it can't. it's not really um, feasible for long-term use. Now, obviously, I'm not encouraging or advising anybody to uh, take any illegal substance. I'm just talking about what is, you know, the pharmacology of, this, of the, the situation. But politics play a role. Lastly, I think, I think it's important to say that Although I mentioned that uh, if you take MDMA, the symptoms disappear, this is not like a, a cure-all. This is only at first, and uh, obviously it's an illegal substance, Class A substance in the UK, Schedule 1, the USA, and um, obviously it's illegal to take. That's possibly, in my, well, in my opinion, that's a shame, that's a pity, because um, there's lots of applications for this substance, you know, MDMA, and the harmfulness of it is much less than, say, substances like alcohol, according to at least psycho, uh, neuropsychopharmacologist Professor David Nutt and the studies that he's done uh, across different countries and different nations, and um, obviously alcohol, different subject I'm going on to now, but alcohol, heroin, cocaine, they come up on top, whereas MDMA is right down near the bottom along with the MCAT, which is methadone and various other substances. So if these substances were all discovered today, remember, 
alcohol's the worst. 